subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. Zero clicks, zero days, surprise suspicious URLs, IMSI catchers. So this is how Amnesty caught Pegasus over the years. And indeed, it provides tips for researchers trying to look for other spyware in the future as well. The Amnesty report details Pegasus activity from 2014 up to July 2021 but mostly focuses on the period between 2018 and 2021. It explains how the software is believed to have evolved over the years to become ever more sophisticated and difficult to detect. So let's start with network injections. This Pegasus-linked activity found in 2019 allegedly showed the spyware performing network injections. And what's a network injection? Well, that means the spyware was allegedly disguising its malicious data requests as legitimate ones originating from the victim. So to do this, Amnesty believes Pegasus operators used either a rogue cell tower or set up equipment at the site of the mobile operator. You might be knowing by now a SIM card's international mobile subscriber identity, also known as IMC, IMSI, is key to this tactic. Mobile phones emit these signals that are received by cell towers in the vicinity. They don't really discern between what's legitimate and what is a rogue cell tower. A rogue cell tower is also known as the IMSI or an IMC catcher and it can intercept a signal from the target mobile phone, register its IMSI or the IMC and submit disguised requests to the mobile operator. Pegasus is believed to have used network injections to redirect the victim's internet activity to malicious sites where its agent can be injected into the phone. As an example, Amnesty cited a 2019 instance when Moroccan activist Marty Monjib, an alleged Pegasus target by the way, tried to visit Yahoo on his phone but was instead redirected to a website with a strange looking address. According to Amnesty, parts of this address appeared in another suspected Pegasus targeted phone months later, that of a Moroccan journalist this time, Omar Radi. And then we come to tracking Pegasus through process names. Alleged Pegasus attacks from 2018, 2019 and 2020 left behind forensic evidence in the form of processors. These were executed by the spyware within a phone. A process is the smallest step an app performs. Any app will run many different processes while in use. And iOS, Amnesty says, maintains records of process executions and their respective network usage in two SQLite databases called um, datausage.sqlite and netusage.sqlite. The databases store details of how much data is used by a process uh, and whether they used Wi-Fi or cellular network. Amnesty said it found traces of suspicious processors potentially linked to Pegasus spyware with the names BH and F Server Net D. These seemingly odd names of these processors may be aimed at obfuscation and Amnesty adds both Marty Monjibs and Omar Radi's network usage databases contain records of a suspicious process called BH. This BH process was observed on multiple locations immediately following visits to Pegasus installation domains, such as the free247downloads.com. And by the way, these processors that were discovered became instrumental as Amnesty found processors with the same name on devices of targeted individuals from around the world. Next, we come to zero-click attacks. Between 2016 and 2018, Pegasus allegedly tried to get into phones by sending a malicious link via SMS, hoping the victim would click. But then, there was a change of strategy, which has reportedly come to light since 2019, when the spyware allegedly started focusing on attacks that require zero clicks. So, no suspicious link, no web serving, the phone just has to be on switched on and connected to the internet for Pegasus to enter with a zero-click strategy. Amnesty says it found the software using Apple messaging service iMessage to perpetuate these zero-click attacks through Apple iCloud online data storage accounts made with Gmail and Microsoft Outlook email addresses. And let's just add to that, when an iPhone user tries to send someone an iMessage, the app automatically performs a lookup of the contact, which means it contacts the Apple servers to see if the person has an iCloud account. Your iPhone will then store a record of you trying to contact the person and the iCloud linked to that person.
So, records from 2019, Amnesty said, show that one victim's iMessage app looked up an account named burgers.079 at gmail.com, likely after the victim received an iMessage from this account. Less than an hour after the lookup of the suspicious account, Amnesty noted that two processes started running, role account D and staging D. Forensic analysis of multiple devices found similar records. In many cases, the same iMessage account reoccurs across multiple targeted devices, potentially indicating that those devices have been targeted by the same operator. Additionally, the processes role account D and staging D occur consistently along with others, the Amnesty Forensic Report said. To add to all of this, in 2021, Amnesty said a French human rights lawyer's iPhone as well performed a lookup of another suspicious iMessage account identified as Lena Keller 2203 at gmail.com. Soon after this, a legitimate Apple process called uh, com.apple.co telephony sent data from the phone to a server with the following online link. So data sent to the link was information about the device like phone model number, iOS build number. And once this data was sent, the phone received a file taking up about 250 kilobytes of space. The file contents unfortunately could not be analyzed since it was encrypted, but Amnesty suspects it contained the Pegasus agent that was installed on the phone and run as Gatekeeper D. This is because the process started running within 20 seconds of the phone sending information to the unknown server. Now, not all of this is to say that it is easy to catch Pegasus. It's not. The researchers say Pegasus no longer uses or leaves traces of its activity in the permanent memory of the phone. In addition, Pegasus also disguises its processes by giving them names that sound like genuine Apple processes, making it that much harder to trace. However, humans make mistakes. So in one instance, Pegasus had been unable to delete its presence from a database while deleting traces from a corresponding database, which had alerted researchers to unusual activity. And as one security researcher who has studied Pegasus says, we'll leave you with this quote from his tweet, what NSO taketh away, NSO also giveth. For The Print, this is Regina Mehdukla Surya. Do not forget to subscribe to The Print's YouTube channel and as always, keep tabs on us across all forms of social media.